Welcome. My name is Joe Renzulli, and along with my partner, Sally Reese, we're going to be sharing with you a series of short uh, videos that deal with our work called the Schoolwide Enrichment Model. Sally and I and a number of our other colleagues have been working on this for over 40 years, and it is now the most widely used enrichment program in programs for gifted education and talent development around the world. We're going to begin with some general background on the model, and I like this quotation uh, by Ashley Montague, uh, teachers are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. It's the work that you do in classrooms every single day that produce young people who will eventually assume important positions in government, business, industry, and all walks of life. And so I think that the importance of your work is really what motivates us to have invested these several years in the development of the school-wide enrichment model. This quotation, uh, a rationale for focusing on creative and productive giftedness is a very important one in all nations of the world. I won't read the entire uh, pre uh, statement, but there is an economic imperative. Countries that invest in highly creative, uh, highly motivated, highly research-oriented young people are going to create the ideas, the inventions, the businesses that improve not just the economic conditions of their nation, but also the uh, social, cultural, educational, and even political leadership of their nation. So this is a very important responsibility for all people that work with young, uh, young people. Um, again, I mentioned there are 40 years of research and development on all aspects of our model. And uh, we have a website, which you see on the screen, where uh, many uh, of the research studies, most of the research studies that we have developed uh, over the years can be downloaded, reproduced, translated, without cost or without permission. And we'll be talking a little later on in this session about some direct resources that you'll have at your disposal. This slide points out something that all teachers are familiar with, and uh, it's basically a description of what I call the continuum of learning theories. And as most teachers know, all learning exists on a continuum from the deductive, didactic, prescriptive on the left, those are the kinds of things that we are required to teach because they're in common core standards or in ministry dictated curriculum, all the way over to the right hand side, which we refer to as inductive, investigative, and imaginative. And while we don't argue with the value and purpose of the left hand side, as the footnote points out, our emphasis is really on the right-hand side. We believe that, again, the kinds of leadership for the world that we're training, uh, down in the lower right, what we call the gold standard, scientists, inventors, entrepreneurs, people who change the world and make things happen, need to have, in addition to a basic education, also an education that focuses on the kinds of thinking skills and creative and investigative activities that we'll be covering in great detail as we move through the school-wide enrichment model. Again, we're not arguing that one is better than the other, but we also believe that there should be a balance between the uh, kinds of thinking indicated on the left and the kinds of uh, thinking that we emphasize in our work on the right-hand side of this diagram. The main focus of our work is to apply the pedagogy of gifted education to total school improvement. And our theme is schools should be places for talent development. Uh, we also believe that a rising tide lifts all ships. As we do things for youngsters that are extremely advanced, like the speedboat on the left can move through the water at 50 knots an hour or a minute. <laughs> Uh, we also want to provide some enrichment opportunities for the majority of the school population, represented by the, the, uh, the boat in the center, 
And even for young people like the person on the right who is not doing as well in school as perhaps they would like to, always struggling to catch up, we sincerely believe that providing all of these groups with various kinds of enrichment experiences is going to make the school a more successful place and mostly a place that focuses on talent development. Our work is based on four sub-theories that you see on the screen, and we'll be covering these sub-theories in more detail as we move throughout the series of videos. In the upper left-hand corner is a theory called the three-ring conception of giftedness, which we'll be describing in detail in a later session. In the upper right, a theory that deals with three interrelated types of enrichment, which is really the pedagogical focus of our work. On the lower right is a theory which we call Operation Houndstooth. And just to summarize this very briefly, we try to give young people an opportunity for various firsthand experiences in social and emotional development and also an orientation toward using their strengths to make the world a better place. The uh, sub-theory on the lower left uh, relates to various kinds of executive functions which are becoming more and more important in today's world. Things like collaboration, cooperation, realistic self-assessment, the ability to work together and effectively with other people. And what we're finding is that Higher levels of all fields, government, business, industry, entertainment, these are the kinds of skills that are being valued as much as just the kinds of things that we typically measure when we look at a student's cognitive ability. Our focus uh, today will be really on the um, two major theories, the three ring conception of giftedness and the enrichment triad model although as we provide some examples of student work in later videos, we will allude to Operation Houndstooth and the executive function sub-theory. Uh, here's a very quick look at the uh, Operation Houndstooth. We see the six factors that were the result of several years of research as we looked into the kinds of things that relate to skills related to social and emotional development. And here's a quick look at the um, uh, executive function sub-theory and the kinds of things that we emphasize in providing learning opportunities for young people. What's very interesting about both of these sub-theories is that they're not things that have ever been taught effectively through direct instruction, but rather through being involved in actual experiences where one needs these skills to make a project work, to make something very important happen. The, three, the four sub-theories underlie what is the focus of our overall model, which is called the school-wide enrichment model. This model consists of three service delivery components the first one being comprehensive strength assessment, and a session on that will be presented uh, later on. The second is uh, curriculum modification or differentiation, and this is achieved through a process that Sally will be talking about, which is called curriculum compacting. And the third uh, service delivery component is, of course, the pedagogy, the three types of enrichment uh, which we'll be covering uh, in the school-wide enrichment model. Now these three service delivery components are brought to bear on three school structures. The first one is the regular curriculum. We want the regular curriculum to be a much more enjoyable and engaging experience for all students and therefore, we've developed some strategies that we'll be talking about later as to how we try to infuse various kinds of enrichment into the regular curriculum. The next one is a component of our model called enrichment clusters. 
and we'll be having a separate uh, session on that. But basically these are uh, groups of children, usually across two or three grade levels, who share a common interest and pursue that interest in an investigative and uh, creatively oriented way. And then the third thing is any other activities that might be organized by the school. These might be after school programs or Saturday programs or clubs. On the right hand side of the queue, you see various resources that Sally and I and many of our colleagues have developed over the years to make implementation easier. So for example, we have lots of curriculum materials. We have developed some procedures for evaluation. Uh, we've also developed an online resource procurement and management system uh, that we'll be talking about in a later session. So this is an overview of the entire model and we'll be covering uh, all of these aspects as we move throughout this series of videos. Now, the one thing that I like to mention at the very beginning is that our work differs from the work of lots of other gifted education or talent development models in a couple of ways. And one of the first ways is that we provide general enrichment, type one and type two, and enrichment clusters to all students. Uh, we believe that educational experiences should be as engaging and as enriching as possible for all students, at least at the general enrichment level. So these are provided for all students. We also believe that students who show a high level of interest, high motivation, high ability in a particular area should be given the opportunity to go on to an advanced level of work, which we call type three enrichment. It's described as individual and small group uh, uh, participation in the development of real problems. However, my favorite off the cuff definition of type three enrichment is the young person thinking, feeling, and doing like the practicing professional, even if they're doing it at a more junior level than an adult scientist from Harvard or Caltech or a filmmaker from Hollywood. They're doing what the big guys do. And this is a very important issue because part of our role as teachers, talent developers, is to be able to pro provide young people with the opportunities, resources, and encouragement to think and feel and do like the practicing professional. And again, you're going to see many examples of this as we move throughout this video series. Now, we're asked often, what are the goals of the school-wide enrichment model? And there are three very simple goals. And the first goal is enjoyment. You know from your own life's experience that anything you enjoy doing, you work harder at, you get more creative about if you like cooking, first you follow the recipe and then you make some modifications and change this and change that, but it's all because you enjoy cooking. Enjoyment leads to engagement. And engagement is very difficult to define, but think of it as falling in love with something. Think of the first time you fell in love with someone or something and how your whole body seemed to change. You were really turned on. You were really excited. And I really believe that engagement is one of the most important things that we can develop in young people. Enjoyment and engagement taken together um, produce enthusiasm for learning and one of the things that we found is that in places where we've used the school-wide enrichment model, when children come home from school, they don't say school is boring. They rather start talking about some of the kinds of things, especially the things in enrichment that they've done in the school that day. So this is really the most important goal uh, for us, enjoyment, engagement, and enthusiasm for learning. Here is something very interesting as well. We've done research in schools based on the school-wide enrichment model, and what we found is that plain old school achievement scores on 
achievement tests have actually improved as a result of using this. And again, I think that this is where that overall enthusiasm for learning flows over from enrichment experiences to just the daily must-do must work that kids have to do in classrooms every day. Um, we're put, we've put together a thing which we call the School-Wide Enrichment Easy Access Toolkit. And this really consists of lots of um, uh, books and articles and things that have been developed over the years and that you will have uh, access to. We're going to try to have at least one and maybe two articles related to each of these videos, but there are also many books that have been written on all the topics, on enrichment clusters, on curriculum compacting, and these relate again to the two major theories, the three ring conception of giftedness theory and the uh, enrichment triad model. The book in the lower right hand corner is an overall big fat book on the school wide enrichment model. And one of the things that uh, Proofrock Press, the publisher of the book, has very nicely done is allowed you to download from a website all of the forms and diagrams and things that we've created. And again, you can do that at uh, no cost and not having any uh, need to get permission. Uh, we've also had some laminated guides on major components of the model. There's one on enrichment clusters, there's one on curriculum compacting. And one of the more recent things that we put together is a series of um, what I call short stuff. One of the things that we found is that many people, especially busy school administrators, who are looking for ways to serve and challenge and develop talents in young people, don't have the time to read big fat books or even long research articles. And so what we've done in this collection is to just simply pull out very short items that you might share with a principal or a curriculum director or a program coordinator so that they can learn a lot about the model in a very short amount of reading time. The other thing that we've done, and there'll be a separate session on this later, is develop an online uh, resource program where we can get an individual strength-based profile for each student. And that profile is read by a remarkable search engine that scans through about 50,000 resources, all enrichment and engagement oriented, and it picks resources just for that child. Teachers can also use it if they're uh, teaching a favorite topic or a required topic. They can put in search words and find enrichment resources that they can infuse into that topic. So this again is a general overview of all of our work over the past several years. And in the sessions that followed, follow, we'll be drilling down to some of the specifics related to all of these three service delivery components.